Rudi Meke me acholi ma par par ma giti ek botwa kantin. Honorable ministers here present. Honorable members of parliament. Chief of the Ugandan People's Defense Force and the officers, men and women, under your charge. Kiguna Chuli Luwara Weng Moktie Kantin. Ladit President, I think I think I would be wasting time to go through the litany of the reasons why we commend you for today's function. For you to better appreciate the importance of today's function, and that's what my brother, the one who is uh, crying for a military rank, honorary, I think, <coughs> He mentioned to, to bring closer to a festering wound in our anthropology as the Acholi people, and I think this applies to the typical African society all over the African continent. death of a member of the family, death of someone who is dear to you, is painful. But death through a perpetration done with malice aforethought, meaning it was maliciously done, meaning it was planned, means it was deliberate, it was not accidental, for whatever reason, is devastating and traumatizing. I was in mid-primary when General Pirino Koya was killed. But what people felt here is what we felt in Agago, what people felt in Lamu, what people felt in Nwaya now and Amuro. At that time it was called Kilak County. Darkness had covered this place. But what you've done to bring back light to us, a good part of which Honorable Henry Uriam Okello has said, is to heal the wound in two ways. At the micro level between the Palaro and the Lamogi people, You know, people always say, Matuput, Matuput. First of all, it is wrongly misrepresented. The justice in the actually traditional justice system is not Matuput, it is Cholokuo. When you take life, if I take life for, from, from General Tema's family, if I take the life of General Tema, immediately under our traditional justice system. Secretary General Todd Wong and all the clan members of Palame have a duty to Cholukuo, to revenge. They have a duty to revenge. And I might, I might be somebody, a non-entity, in the Choli language, you say Dogedano. I might be Dogedano. 
who kills a giant like Jero Tema, in the Chulukuo, the revenge, they will not look for me because I cannot fill Jero Tema's grave. They look for somebody in my extended family, in my clan, whose slaughter in revenge would bring up the same quantity of tears the Palami people suffered when I killed Jerotem. And that duty can only be terminated by Chulukuo, by compensation. And sometimes it is called blood money. Before the British government came, it was not money, it was not even cattle. My people would have to find a girl ripe for marriage to give over to the family of General Tema, to continue producing children in the name of General Tema. That was our custom, that was our justice. Now when the British brought their legal system here in 1902, there's a clause there which is called the repugnancy clause where customary law is only applicable if it is not repugnant to good conscience. Something we have even in our constitution, we have in our Judicature Act, we've continued, giving exception to when customary law is applicable. Then they converted it to payment using cattle, 20 head of cattle, 15, 10, or even two, depending on the nature of causation. Then that terminates the duty or the right to revenge. And then when that compensation is either agreed on or actually paid, then you go through a public function, a public ritual called matoput, that concoction of the oput tree. Oput tree is in the, in the family of mahogany, it's a big tree. That's not what, it is not matoput that brings justice. As a matter of fact, Matoput is just public notice to the whole world that between the two families, there's no right of revenge anymore. That's what Matoput is all about. So uh, the sooner we begin talking about Chulukwo and not Matoput, the better. Because without Chulukwo, you cannot go through Matoput. The right to revenge will continue until... compensation for life taken is done. Why am I thanking you? Why am I saying at the micro level, you made this possible between the Palaro and the Lamogi people? Because you provided the, the funds, I am told you provided the funds which the Lamogi people now were able to pay. And that is permitted in our culture. When you give the money to me, it stays one day overnight with me, it is now my money. It doesn't matter where I get it from. Even when it is cut, it doesn't matter where I get the cut from, I'll take it to the family we've wronged. So you sort it out within the two families. But because General Koya was killed when he was in the service, and all fingers are pointed to people who were in the service with him. You have also made peace between, by all these things you've done, a house, a holding this function, and so many and so many. You have even now Chuluk war between the government of Uganda, the state of Uganda, and the people of Acholi, because Okoye was larger than Palaro. He was our son. So this is really important. And as a rider to this, recently you were in uh, Guru. There, there was a crusade organized by one of our pastors in this country. You came out clear. There was no mistake. It was not, it was unmistakable. You came out and said, you apologize to the Chuli people for the mistakes done during your tenure in office. You've done many things, 
But one of the things that have given you high moral ground is that statement, that owning up. <laughs> to own up, you don't have to be culpable. You don't have to have done something yourself. But when you are head of the family, and it is in sync with our traditional, with our tradi tradition, as actually with our traditional justice system, that the head of the family takes responsibility. Even when you not send your children to do the wrong, you take responsibility. I know your excellency, I have been asked, and soon I'll be bothering you to meet a team of actually elders who want to come and converse with you over that statement. One of the greatest statements you made here but I remember, this is not the first time you've given this apology. When I was state minister here, your delegate here, in 1998, we went to Amoro, IDP. And you said, I'm so sorry to find you in this situation. You, you saw the response, you saw the applause. The other day, Benedicto Kawanoka Day, where you, which you were not able to attend for the first time, I said this, and let me reiterate it here. The time is now for us to speak to one another in this country. The time is now for us to converse, talk peace. Here in the Chile sub region, it is peace building. Elsewhere, you might be averting a possible problem, but here it is peace building. At the personal level, at the collective level, because we are a tribal society, at the tribal level, at the state level, let us speak to one another. And let us build this culture of sitting down and speaking. We don't have to fight for 20 years the way Coin did here. And then he invited me to go and meet him in Garamba. I sat with him for six hours. If we had spoken the week he went to the bush, or soon thereafter, all this devastation here would not have taken place. So, Nadit, you've taken that high moral ground You've thrown us a big challenge. And as I said, actually elders want to come and have this conversation. Again, you're bringing closer to that wound that has fested here for a long time. I know It is much easier to box, it is, for me, it is easy to box general, the CDF general. But it's not as easy as it is to box for me to say sorry. It is human nature. But when you want to know where greatness, greatness lies, find where somebody stands up and say, yes, I take responsibility. Then you know that person is a servant of God. You know that person, God is speaking through that person. I want to say, um, the, 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 the Honorable Minister mentioned, and others mentioned, a number of people you, 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 you facilitated, you made contribution to ensure that they are decently buried. Like the President, he forgot General Basilio Olaro Kelo, whom you brought back and buried in Mariupé. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was Colonel, I think, or Brigadier now. Langoya from Padibe. He was Brigadier. For, he died in London. Those are what we call the olive branch, extending the olive branch. Those are some of the things I always urge my Acholi people. When somebody extends the olive branch, 
play ball. Takes two to tango. We will come, Ladit will come, we'll have our conversation. I've been approached, we'll come, because that statement you made in Gulu was a great statement, and it's the beginning of a new dispensation. But now, people have talked about it must have been Amin who killed Okoya and what have you. And the circumstantial evidence is strong in that regard. They say uh, General Okoya had rebuked him when Milton Obote's uh, life was nearly taken at Kololo, is it Lugogo? Lugogo, I think. But I want the students of history, those who are interested in our political history, and, and, and maybe I should have made this lecture in a military academy. For me, I attribute the killing of General Okoya to the Sudan curse, the Sudan factor, which brought the government of Milton Obote twice down. Amin himself was a pawn. For those who've read about Colonel Steiner, who was with the Anyanya, that diary which has been spoken about and written about, Colonel Steiner was also involved in the Biafra rebellion. He was a busybody, an agent provocateur. General Okoya exposed himself as a formidable impediment for the attainment of that design to have President Milton Obote out of power. To achieve that soft underbelly in the geopolitics of the area during the Anyana Rebellion. Your Excellency, at the end, there was nobody to stop Amin. Lieutenant Colonel Yeto Jok was a junior officer comparatively. There was nobody to stop. Amin, but Amin was a puppet, was a pawn in the chess game. The rest is history. But then the Sudan curse, the Sudan factor, brought Milton Obote's government down a second time. You had people here talking, talking about going to skin the elephant, young old age. And the core of the people who went to Winkibul in southern Sudan to train as guerrillas to fight Amin came from here. The clan and sub-tribe of Palaro and the other people joined them. Because they had the Lapi. Lapi is, you say you have a just war, you are declaring a just war. In actually, you say Lapi, you have Lapi. He killed us for nothing. As if killing Okoye was not enough, he slaughtered everybody that was in the military whom he believed could revenge for the killing of Okoye. That was the belief. It was the wingable force with the direct support of Khartoum, the government in Khartoum. And there were only two countries that allowed the Obote to have guerrillas in their country. It was Tanzania and Sudan. And the Sudan force was trained here under the charge of Basilio Okello in, in Winkibul. And people would disappear, say, they have gone to hunt the elephant. They have gone to skin the, the elephant. That was the euphemism, used for saying they've gone to join the guerrilla activity. 
They were transported from Winkibul to Khartoum to Port Sudan, down the Indian Ocean, down, down the Suez, the, the, the Red Sea, the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean, down to Tanzania, I think Tanga or something, I can't remember now. Tanga, eh? Thank you. And they were part of the force that, alongside U.S., helped by the Tanzanian People's Defense Force, got rid of Idi Amin. Why do I say the Sudan curse broke down the government of Milton Obote twice? Because the straw that broke the back of Milton Obote was the disagreement between Basilio Okello and the government. Here they blamed you. Why, why are you supporting SPLA when we are suffering? You brought suffering here because you are supporting SPLA. That was the talk here. But for me, I would say no. You inherited the support for SPLA because the government of Milton Obote supported the SPLA. And Bazidu said, no, this is wrong. And Peter Otai said, who are you? This is not a military government. We are a democratic uh, government. And the military is under the charge of politicians. So who are you? And then uh, when Ethiopian planes, this, what I'm telling you people know here in Acholi, people of my age and, and above, instead of throwing ordinance, military ordinance, the other side of the Agoro Imatong range, they erroneously dropped it in Agoro, the side of Uganda, and Basilu refused to release them. So how you are going to bring us problems here. And, and Basilu's case was, at our how of need, it was Sudan and Tanzania that stood with us. Sudan allowed us to train, gave us arms, and actually Milton Obote himself says he left Tanzania and went to Khartoum. One of the aborted coups found him there, at least in, in his own account. So the best that Uganda under Milton Obote would do was to act as mediator between Khartoum and the SPLA. That was the position of Basili Okello when he was brigade commander here in Goro. That these are two people who are important to us. The Southern Sudanese, our kith and kin. But Khartoum stood with us at our how of need. So when your two brothers, two brothers are fighting, a third brother cannot come and take sides with one brother. So we should use our good offices to mediate between the two. And it is that that simmered and ended up in the collapse. And for me, I would have said, Obote II government was never overthrown, it just imploded. So are they the, the Sudan curse? We here, we know about the Sudan curse again, and I hope it is the last time the curse comes from the Sudan, when Sudan supported Joseph Coins LRA and wreaked immeasurable, unspeakable havoc in this place. The only two things, Your Excellency, which the people speak about joyously or happily, that came from the Sudan, was Governor Samuel Baker, who had his, who stayed in particularly just a few kilometers south, where on Ajulu Hill, he put up his barricade. Fought slavery, slave trade, the Katumas were the worst slave traders from Arabia in Africa. Maybe matched by Tipu Tip, Mohammed El Mujebi. So people speak here fondly when they speak about what has come from the Sudan. They speak about Sir Samuel Baker. The second one, Ladid is the Catholic Church. That is the other institution that came from Sudan which the people of actually speak fondly of because of what the Catholic Church did in this region. 
It was more prominent than the colonial government. Apart from forced labor, constructing roads, and isolated uh, hospitals, centers here, the bulk of medical facilities, all schools, No wonder in the independence election, a primary school teacher could defeat a master's holder, a, degree, a master's degree holder in election. If the other one was Anglican and the primary school teacher was Catholic. So what you've done here, what you've done today here and that statement of yours, if we seize it, if we seize that tide and make good use of it, history will be very kind to us with regard to this sub-region. Otherwise, what did the colonialists leave us here with? I read, I didn't know the deep biography of uh, Jero Okoye. I didn't know he had gone up to junior secondary. That was like, 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 no, much more than A-level. Those junior secondary people were powerful. But why did he drop out of school? Probably General Koya would still be alive today as a medical doctor, as an engineer, as an administrator who has retired. It was because of the colonial economy which did not favor us. I've spoken about this before. I'll continue to speak about it. The cotton economy, which the people in southern Uganda abandoned and went for something of value. His father could not pay for his fees because they were dependent on the colonial economy. That colonial economy is still intact with us here. And part of peace building in this place, if only to honor the memory of General Okoye, is to focus on what to do with the colonial economy in this place. How do we jump out of the frying pan of the colonial economy? Today we would not be holding a function. Maybe today we would be holding a function of a great professor. You would have found no reason to come here unless if you knew him for one reason or another. But the colonial economy brought us here. It compelled General Okoya to choose to go to the military. He may not have gone there. He would have pursued his education. But each one of us were subject of the will of destiny as it is ordained by God. So I did Wapoyo Tutual, Wapoyo Matek what you've done for the reasons I've given, for the reasons my colleagues have given. You don't know what you want to do. The did Archbishop, Rudy Mamegua, Lutella Mamegua, Unity Parliament, District Level, Kabir Mapat, Unity Tenu, Unity Moin. You don't jump okay, nay. The dear thing, chau wajo, wajo ke kain ana be rupere kwana kwana. You jump my rage, you ma polo te me ya chole. Bal mo te me de wing, eni ye chu ye en ma chalu wongan. Kanga mo ti u chie ka mo ti kete, in put chie be rupere keri ti u malo. Kangan mo wajo ni, ana ye bala, wamaru kuot, 
And, and your excellency, what you did in uh, Karuma ground, I hope it was in Kaunda ground. Yes, you see, this is how elders do it in Acholi here. Your children or your brother's children or some children in the clan do wrong. You don't send boys to go and apologize because they can get killed during the period when the right of revenge still exists. An elder like you comes and raises his hand. He doesn't say, we have wronged, our children have wronged you. The elder will say, I, the elder will speak as the embodiment of the guilty family. That calling the other elder, say, Benayo, I have wronged you. Please ask the young fellows to put their spears down. Let us sit and find a solution. And that's what Benayo, elder Benayo on the other side will do. So what you did in Kaunda ground is to tell the Acholi people whatever has gone wrong, including what Coin did, by the way, because Coin was your subject. You say, look, the war took 20 years. I take responsibility. It's not guilt. You own this home called Uganda. You own this family called Uganda. Say, I take this responsibility. Let us sit down and talk peace. Let's sit down what to do next, the way forward. That is my understanding. If I'm wrong, please help me to understand that I'm wrong. But that is my understanding. That you say, look, let's sit down. Things do go wrong. It has not started here. It has happened the world over. And let's see how we can make amends. That's, that's how I understood you, Ladit. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Ladit. Ladit, I, I now take the singular honor to invite you to speak to your people. Apoy. Apoyo, Apoyo. Thank you. Thank you. Sit, sit down, please. Thank you.